You're listening to the Business and Life Podcast, where seven days a week, proven entrepreneurs share their success stories, failures, and give you true value on how you can build a great business and an awesome life with your host, Mike Olivas. Let's get cranking Business and Life Nation. Today, I'm chatting with Phil Graham. Phil is the host of the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast and founder of Phil Graham Digital, a full service ad agency that helps entrepreneurs and companies create reliable, scalable, and duplicatable ad systems. Phil, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, man. Glad to be here, Mike. Absolutely. Thanks for taking the time. So, Phil, tell our listeners something uh, maybe interesting about yourself and also where you're calling in from today. Yeah, so I'm from Seattle, in Seattle, Washington, a uh, Seah- Seahawks fan. And uh, yeah. some, something interesting about myself, about eight or nine years ago, something like that, I lost 125 pounds. I like what? was, yeah, man, I was like super overweight. I'll have to show you the before and after. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I was in a job I didn't love and I was super overweight. And I finally just like, that was it. Enough was enough. So I went beast mode, changed my life lost 125 pounds. I went from, you know, not really liking to work out that much to uh, working out twice a day, seven days a week and changed everything. So awesome, man. Well, congratulations on that. That's a huge win. Thanks, man. Well, also, <laughs> was, that also kind of goes full circle in terms about building the life that you want to live the business you want and being healthy and taking care of number one is number one. Absolutely. Right. Cause if you're and not, I learned man, a lot, you know, what I look, Go ahead. Yeah, what I learned there translated so much into my own business. It's crazy. Like I, I had no idea things were so interconnected, but they absolutely are. And so I'm glad I went through that. And uh, it's it's revolutionized how I do business. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. If you feel like shit, you're going to perform similarly. You know? Yeah. And sometimes <laughs> it's just the way, you know, and, but when you feel good, you look good, you got the confidence level up, you're stoked on life, business is going well. It's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a crazy like algorithm. It's just a simple method of understanding that like, yeah, man, health, health definitely wins the game across the board. What, so tell us a little bit about, uh, Phil Graham digital. I know you also have a podcast, uh, we're going to mention as well, but tell us a little about Phil Graham digital and what it does for, uh, the marketplace. Yeah. So I've been in the marketing and sales game for over 15 years and I created philgramdigital.com as an agency where we focus on leveraging paid ads. So we help clients leverage paid ads to create reliable, scalable systems that actually bring clients and customers in, in a way that doesn't rely on hope or chance. There's so many people and so many entrepreneurs, especially that are doing things that, that rely on hope and chance and algorithms crossing their fingers and there's a better way. And so we created that and we serve clients all over the world using this system. And it's, it's something I absolutely love to do. I'm really literally living my dream doing it, working with amazing clients. How did you do it? I mean, let's talk about that a little bit. How, how have you been, built a system that actually will bring in clients when you are, I mean, you are dealing with obviously algorithms that uh, we don't have control over from yes. an advertising and marketing standpoint. But, um, and it's getting expensive. It's getting more expensive. We all see that kind of happening on both yep. levels from uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. I mean, you name it, Google, of course. I mean, my ads for one of my companies uh, more than quadrupled on a cost per click and, very, and the same keywords, you know. So yep. tell me, tell me how, what, how you differentiate yourself with other agencies. Great question. So a few different ways. Number one, we don't prostitute like I, I, I like to say a lot of people prostitute themselves with their ads. So yeah. they, they go now it's different. If you've got like a 10 or $20 product, you can go straight for the sale. Yeah. But for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially like service-based and coaches and consultants and agencies and anybody with a higher price tag, you're so much better off leading with value first. And so we lead with value first and then use retargeting in a very, very smart way. And we do it a lot differently than most people do. I call it micro content ads. So imagine you were a gym or a fitness trainer. What most of them do is just put out these broad general ads. Hey, we can help people do this and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then um, most of them don't retarget at all. But if they do, it's just broad. Imagine if instead you put out short videos about the, the different reasons why somebody might join a gym or get a trainer. One reason is to lose weight. 
Somebody else might not care about that. They want to build muscle. And there's going to be a few different reasons. If you put out short videos about each reason and you, you put them out as ads, you then retarget based off of what people engaged with and you talk to them more about that same very thing, that takes it to another level. That's smart retargeting. It's like, you know I like the Seahawks. If I, if I was looking for a house and you were a real estate agent and you talked about the Seahawks in your ad and somehow applied that to you know, how you do business, you would get my attention way more than somebody who's just dealing with broad topics about you know, houses and stuff. And so we kind of applied that. And then also the other part is we use data, not guessing. We use data to tell us what to do more of and what's working and what's not working. And that's where I think most people fail and including a lot of agencies. They just throw stuff up up against the wall and hope it works. We look at the data and that guides our decisions and gives us a huge advantage. And then lastly, it's just over a long period of time, talent is what separates us. It's like everybody knows how to play basketball, but very few people can monetize the ball like LeBron James. Every, anybody can run a Facebook ad. Anybody. You could teach a 12-year-old how to push the buttons and put the text in the right spots. But the talent to actually run the ads and know what kind of messaging to say and how to retarget and when to adapt, that is what makes somebody successful versus not. And so that's what we focused on. So you mentioned a little bit about the, the talent. Do you, is this um, talent on your team? Yes. Right. And talent that, I, that I, I've built up over the years, a lot of trial and error and right. testing. Right. Are you A-B testing on all the ads that you're doing? I mean, you mentioned something earlier, which I like. I mean, the, the short videos, and I want to reiterate that and we'll get to that question, but short videos of why people, and so if you listen to this great value, great something that sure you can give it a shot on your own, but can Phil obviously help you kind of bring this to life with not only the ads, but also the copy, which is just important, if not the most important these days, right? Yes. Copy, copy is huge. But I think the value first thing is huge, right? Because people don't like to get advertised to. It's very, right. very and, and, and if you're on Facebook, you have to realize that you are on a platform where they know they're being advertised to. So you have to be extremely creative, not yep. just in Google. Sure, Google might win the game of organic traffic and also um, a lot less traffic, but possibly uh, those that are actually looking for it, it's their idea. And Facebook, it's your, you have to create the idea and create the spark, but you don't got to do it to everybody. Like, like Phil's saying, right. you, you don't have to be throwing everything against the wall and see what sticks because that, what that means is that you're wasting a shit ton of money. Yeah. And you don't want to do that because it can get expensive fast, believe me. Hell yeah. And so I, I, I've been there, you know, tens of thousands of dollars yep. gone in like yep. weeks, if not sometimes, you know, less. And so what, um, what you mentioned before was the talent, by the way. So you built a team around you with talent. Yes. Okay, great. And, and as well those, as, go ahead. How do you have parameters on how you bring those people on board with you? Well, I train them, you know, so I've developed my talent over the course of about 15 years. And nice. I run ads for many different industries. We've got clients that spend three, four, five thousand a day or more. We've got clients that spend ten bucks a day. Although I don't really recommend spending that little, but sure. if you have to start there, you can. And so I've learned a lot over the years working with all these different industries, looking at insane amounts of data, and and then also having a sales background as well. Um, so you bring that all together. It's like a, a basketball player not only being able to have offense, but they play good de- defense too. It's like a complete game. And that's kind of what I have been able to develop over the years. And a lot of people um, either go with agencies that are not like that, or if they want to do this themselves, which you can absolutely do, you can even be your own agency. They, after taking a course or doing it for a month, they, it's like they want to be LeBron right away. Right. And it yeah. doesn't work that way. Like you, you ha- it takes some time and effort and testing and stuff. What are you excited about right now within the digital marketing industry? Voice. I love voice. You know, I have a, a Facebook ads podcast that I've had for three years, the next level Facebook ads podcast. It's grown like crazy. And the, I think voice is exploding. You know, you've got Google home, you've got Alexa devices, we've got our phones. And I think over time, more and more of that is going to come. Like as houses are being built, I think Alexa is going to be in our walls in, you know, and 
it, it's so easy to multitask and listen to podcasts. And so that's the number one thing that I'm most excited about looking at the future for sure. We're going to dive into our guests' experiences in business and life after this quick message. Life Nation, are you struggling with growing your business and hitting goals? Or are you over the nine to five grind, finally ready to take the dive into entrepreneurship? What are you waiting for? Go to michaellevis.com to set up a free, no obligation coaching call today. That's M-I-K-E-O-L-I-V-A-S.com. I can help you. It may be the best call you've ever made. Yeah, I'm excited about that too. And I'm also excited about not only the podcast world, but the fact that what you just said, like it's, it's easy to multitask or, um, you know, uh, I, I know that our listeners and my listeners are going to be shaving or in the shower or on yep. their way to work, dropping a quick 20 minute, 30 minute, um, you know, mastermind sesh that they're just learning a lot with people like you and I on, on, on a call like this and on a podcast like this, because it just starts sparking. That's how I started my own, right? Sparking, sparking the mind when I listen to JLD. Now, honestly, I didn't listen to any other ones. I was like, I like this guy. I like what, he's do- what he does. And I think I'm starting to get the same similar fans. It's like, okay, I resonate with it. That's okay. There's, there's tens yep. of thousands of other ones. If not, that's fine. But the whole idea <laughs> is keep learning. The, the willingness to learn more is at an all-time high. And it's yeah. so exciting. And I think that's great. But also, action is really important. And someone like you in your industry is able to take you know, probably millions of dollars, obviously, of ad spend that you've had yes. um, to be able to use that as data. Have you ever had a niche that just you couldn't figure out? No, we've never had anything we couldn't figure out. We've had definitely niches that are very challenging. Like I've been in like some of the dating ones. Yep. Uh, it's extremely challenging because things are hard to get approved. You have to be very vanilla with what you have out there. Um, and there's, you know, a ton of competition. I'm used to competition, though. I, I look at competition different than most. But um, that's probably one of the most challenging um, industries we've been in. But we've, we've always been able to figure it out because um, human psychology is human psychology. And so you have to figure out, and like you said earlier, when people are on Facebook, you have to be creative to get their attention. I always tell people, if you're running Facebook ads, they're not on Facebook to look at ads. That's not why people use it. And a lot of times what I say is, if you were going to do some amazing organic post, that is what should be an ad. You know, I don't love organic because you can't scale it, you can't control it. And there's a lot of issues and negativities around it. You could do that same organic post and direct it to the exact people that you would want to see it and then know exactly how many people saw it and whether that was successful or not, where there's no guessing. And where people get messed up is when they do ads, they go into a different mode. It's like, okay, instead of posting helpful content, we're going to post a sales pitch just because we're spending money behind it. And that's, to me, one of the biggest mistakes people make. So if you just post great shit, yep. good things will happen. And then you, re- you can retarget and post more direct calls to action following up on that. It's always... You know, I give another example. If you were to go to Starbucks right now after this podcast and meet somebody where like you're an entrepreneur, you, you find out they're an entrepreneur, you kind of hit it off a little bit. You're not going to be best friends today. You literally just met. And a lot of people, when it comes to ads, they run their ads like they're trying to get a best friend right away. It takes time. Same thing with ads, just like it would in person. Everybody who's on Facebook is a human being on the, end, uh, the, on the other end of their screen. Yeah. And people think it's because it's online, it's different. No, it's a human. You got to treat them that way. Yeah, no, I agree. I think valuable content and copies um, definitely run in the show. If I had to ask you this question, I love to talk to digital marketers and ask this question. Maybe it'll challenge a little bit, but I think you usually Uh-oh, have right. quick. It's uh, copy or uh, design. Which one's the copy? Game? hundred percent copy over design. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. agree with it now. I think, I think maybe about five years ago, it was like the clickbait world, right? Where everybody yep. was just like, Oh, Hey, there's a hot chick. Let me click on it. What? This has nothing that this has to do with the genes. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. how is this relevant, bro. Right. But yeah. like, uh, uh, but you know, this clickbait out there, we've had some like, we, where we kind of combined the two where there was, cause I do a national group travel collegiate company that we do oh, cool. travel across the country. Mm-hmm. And, then there was like, she's talking and she's talking about the copy. But even then you start getting to like, 
cute girl talking on, and it was still clickbait. So I think valuable copy and that actually answers, and I like your, your concept earlier, and I hope people take this and at least maybe implement it, hopefully, guys, if you're listening to this, that, you know, try to find out, solve a problem, use that. What, why do people use you? Use that, ad number one. Why yep. is another people, reason people use you? Use that, ad number two. Retarget why those reasons are still, right? And then kind of elaborate on those reasons on those retargeting. And I think it's like, yep. a, it looks so complex. It kind of reminds me, sometimes it look, when you look at the dashboard, sometimes it can look like pretty complex. And I think Facebook does that for a reason, obviously, right? So yeah. it can look <laughs> yeah. complex, but you, you want to simplify it, right? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a craps table. And so right. when it's all said and done, I mean, there's, there's some people out there like obviously Phil. And if you're listening, definitely give him a shout and see if he can help you out. What is the website again, Phil, so they can head out there? Yeah, it's philgramdigital.com. And uh, in addition to a lot of free content, the podcast has three years worth of weekly episodes awesome. with just loaded with value. So always, I'm always down to help people out for free because I believe in walking my talk, giving yeah. value before yeah. asking for anything. So Yeah, absolutely. How, uh, out of all your successes and failures, Phil, like what in, in business and in uh, your entrepreneurship journey here, what is the one piece of pardon advice that you'd give to the business and life uh, peeps out there listening today? Man, it's hard to boil it down to one. Um, I'll try, but uh, hopefully I can give a couple um, in this. But number one, I would say mindset over tactics, mindset over everything. So many people think they're looking for the next tactic, the next template that's going to help them. Mindset, having the right mind frame and expectations and all that stuff, knowing how to work your mind is by far the very best indicator in of success through my experience. And that would be my number one. Okay. And also like understanding talent does matter. You can't just read a book and all of a sudden be an expert on something. Um, you can get there, but you have to do the work and it takes time. And then the, another thing too is, sorry, I'm giving like three or four, but that's fine. Um, I love it. Okay, cool. Like too many people worry about vanity metrics and they confuse vanity metrics with success. You know, there was a day where I saw somebody post a video about how to get likes on Instagram. Oh, you know, nothing, shit. you know, nothing wrong. If somebody is interested in that, nothing wrong with that. But like it had all of these views. The same day, the CEO of Zoom, the service we're on right now, who, by the way, started it with zero and is worth over $20 billion, yeah, put out a video and it had, it had hardly any views because he's not, he's not focused on making him fit himself like, quote, famous or trying to get likes and stuff like that. People, what they're paying attention to is screwed up and that, that, that causes failure for a lot of people. So don't take your eye off the ball and think, that vanity metrics equate to success because I talk to people all the time that come to me for consulting that have tons of vanity metrics that look amazing and they're not making any money. Right. No. And I'll, and I'll, and I know that you said it's okay and all, and I'm going to say, no, it's not. Because, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. And I was trying to be nice, but I you know. know. And I'm okay. Well, uh, yeah, I do some business <laughs> consulting. So I'll be like, dude, who gives a shit of how many likes you have? Right? Thank Eight you. Yeah, you said it like, <laughs> doesn't matter like what if half the time like, it's fake too yeah. oh but yeah for even, sure do you know how many bots i mean half of the traffic at people's websites are fake now like 50 percent yep. of bots out there and so knowing vanity metrics give give what's another vanity metric so likes we know is one of them because a lot of things like oh let me go click on these these might be leads no they're not you're gonna spin your wheels <laughs> on ten thousand <laughs> likes and when you could be knocking on the right doors versus yep. the potential doors that might need to open another door What's another vanity metric out there? Because I like that. Yeah, and there's two levels. So there's levels of if you're looking at somebody else's and then levels from your own ad account. If you're looking at somebody yeah. else's likes, comments, shares, like there's nothing wrong with those. But if you're judging success based on that, it has nothing to do with success. I, I know people making millions of dollars. They could put out a post and literally it'll probably get nothing. And I know people that'll put out a post and get tons of comments and shares that don't make money and vice versa. Yep. But it just doesn't equate to success. Now, let's talk about like metrics in your own ad account, for example. Here's an interesting thing, because things are not always black and white. I'll give you a perfect example. Earlier today, I was looking at an ad account. We do, we do so much testing. Testing, this is another key for Facebook ad success, by the way, you guys. Let me just give you a quick stat. 
this is not political, but I have to use a political example. Sure. In our, in our last U.S. presidential election, there was two campaigns, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. They spent similar amounts on Facebook ads. In terms of testing, it was night and day difference. Hillary's campaign tested 66,000 different things during the entire campaign. Wow. Donald Trump's campaign tested 5.9 million. 5.9 million versus 66,000 tests. Shoot. Donald Trump's people all day, every day, did nothing but test over and over. Test this audience, test this headline, change it one word, blah, blah, blah. And they dominated because of that kind of testing. And here's the interesting thing when you're testing, and we test everything. Um, today, you would think normally one of the big things I look at is the link click-through rate. When you put, put an ad out, you want to have a good click-through rate, a good low cost per click, et cetera. And that is still something we pay attention to. But I was looking at an ad account today where we're testing three different ads. And the ad with the highest link click-through rate, which is good, had way less leads than the ad with the lowest click-through rate, which is not so good. So you have to look at the entire picture, not just one metric to see if something is working or not. Because what a lot of people might do is just look at the click-through rate and say, that's not a good click-through rate, so we need to kill that ad. But if they don't realize that's what's bringing in the leads or the sales, then they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. And then guess what? When they do that, they blame it on Facebook and say, Facebook doesn't work. Or, you know, it doesn't work for my industry. And that's just not true. That is some great value bombs, guys. If you're listening or you want more information, check out the show notes. We'll have some more of this information and timestamps in there as well. Programdigital.com. Check out the podcast, Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast. Bill, dude, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate your time, Mike, as well. Talk to you very soon, my friend. Life Nation, you've got to remember that in order for things to change, you must change. And in order for things to get better, you must get better. You just got better by hanging out with me, Michael Levis, and the Business and Life Nation. So come back tomorrow because I'm here dropping sound bombs seven days a week, baby. If you'd like to subscribe, please do so you can take action and execute. See you tomorrow.